Welcome to the Massachusetts Attorney General's training on the open meeting law. During this training, we'll explain the requirements of the open meeting law so that you as a member of the public, the press, or a public body can understand and follow the law. Please note that this presentation is current as of March 2018. Please check with the Attorney General's office to ensure that a more recent presentation has not been published. You can do so by visiting the Attorney General's Open Meeting Law website at www.mass.gov slash AGO slash Open Meeting. This training is divided into six parts. You can view the entire training by watching each part in order, or you can skip to any particular part you'd like to review. The runtime for the entire presentation is approximately one hour. The Open Meeting Law tries to strike a balance between government accountability, transparency, and government efficiency. The law ensures transparency by requiring public bodies to post notice of their meetings, conduct deliberations in public view, and provide public access to both their meetings and certain documents. The law also enables the government to efficiently and effectively manage its operations by allowing certain deliberations to take place in executive or closed session. Finally, the law permits public bodies to maintain the confidentiality of certain executive session records. The Division of Open Government within the Attorney General's Office is responsible for educating and training public officials and members of public bodies on the requirements of the Open Meeting Law. The Division also has the authority to promulgate regulations to interpret and enforce the law. You can find the Attorney General's Open Meeting Law regulations on our website. The division also provides guidance on the open meeting law's requirements through a hotline that the public can call with questions. The hotline number is 617-963-2540. Questions can also be emailed to the division at openmeeting@state.ma.us. We also provide monthly webinars where staff attorneys speak about the open meeting law and answer questions in real time. Finally, the division addresses open meeting law complaints filed against public bodies. The division investigates complaints, makes findings, and, if necessary, brings enforcement actions. All of the Attorney General's open meeting law determinations are available on the Attorney General's website, along with other educational guidance, such as checklists for the creation of meeting notices and minutes, and answers to certain frequently asked questions. The open meeting law requires that all public body members sign a certification form within two weeks of taking an oath of office, or, if no oath is required, before beginning performance of the office. Public body members must certify that they've received copies of the open meeting law, the open meeting law regulations, the Attorney General's open meeting law guide, and open meeting law determinations issued to the member's public body within the last five years in which the Attorney General found a violation of the law. Members also certify that they've read and understand the consequences for violating the law. For local public bodies, these materials should be provided by the municipal clerk, either in digital or paper form. For regional, district, county, and state public bodies, they should be provided by the appointing authority, the executive director, or another administrator or designee. The certification form, as well as the guide, can be found at the Attorney General's website. The person distributing the materials should retain the certifications as a public record. The Office of the Attorney General does not need to receive a copy. A public body member must sign a new certificate upon re-election or reappointment to the public body, but need not sign a certificate when joining a subcommittee. This presentation covers a number of aspects of the open meeting law. However, there are some basic principles that we'd like you to keep in mind. First, whenever a public body holds a meeting, the public must be given proper notice of the meeting. Second, all meetings must be open and accessible to the public, unless the public body properly enters into executive, that is, closed, session. Third, public bodies must create and maintain accurate minutes for all meetings, including both open and executive sessions. Finally, there's a complaint process, whereby a person may file a complaint alleging that a public body has violated the open meeting law. We'll discuss later the ways that open meeting law complaints can be filed. The open meeting law only applies to public bodies, and a question we are asked frequently is whether or not an entity is a public body. To make that determination, the best place to start is with the open meeting law's definition of the term public body. A public body is defined as a multiple member board, commission, committee, or subcommittee, however created, elected, appointed, or otherwise constituted, that's established to serve a public purpose. 
This is a very broad definition, but it's important to note that a public body must have multiple members. An individual public official cannot be a public body and therefore does not have to comply with the open meeting law unless that individual is serving as a member of a public body. Also, note that a public body can be any type of multiple member board regardless of what it's called. It can be called a committee, a task force, an ad hoc committee, or a working group, but if it meets this definition, it is a public body. Subcommittees are also public bodies. A subcommittee includes any multiple member board created to advise or make recommendations to a public body. There is a judicially recognized exception to the definition of public body. This is the Connolly exception, and it was created in 1991 by the Supreme Judicial Court in the case of Connolly v. School Committee of Hanover. The Connolly exception states that where an individual public official voluntarily creates a body to advise that person on a decision that he or she has the sole authority to make, that committee is not subject to the open meeting law. In the Connolly case, the superintendent of schools had the sole authority to recommend a candidate for the position of principal to the school committee for confirmation. The superintendent decided to create a committee to interview candidates and make recommendations to him. This committee consisted of members of the public, as well as school officials, and even some school committee members. And the court found that because the committee was created by the superintendent solely to advise the superintendent, and because the superintendent could have interviewed and chosen a candidate without creating a committee, the committee was not a public body and therefore was not subject to the open meeting law. Note, however, that if it had been the school committee that had the power to choose the new principal, and the school committee decided to create a committee to interview candidates, the committee would have been a public body subject to the open meeting law. There are also several statutory exclusions to the open meeting law's definition of public body. The Massachusetts State Legislature and its committees are not public bodies. Bodies of the judicial branch, such as judicial panels or juries, are also not public bodies. Not-for-profit organizations are not public bodies. Bodies created by one of the six constitutional officers solely to advise that constitutional officer are also not public bodies. However, this applies only to the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary of state, the attorney general, the state auditor, and the treasurer. In addition, all public bodies that are not established to serve a public purpose are not public bodies for the purposes of the open meeting law. For example, an office committee to plan a retirement party for a colleague will likely not be a public body. Finally, groups that do not take any collective action are not public bodies. For example, focus groups, where a public official invites all interested persons to attend a meeting and provide feedback on an issue of concern, but no votes will be taken or report produced, and there is no required number of attendees, such groups generally will not be considered public bodies. There are different types of public bodies, state, local, regional, district, and county. These distinctions matter only for the process of filing meeting notices and authorizing remote participation. State public bodies include bodies such as the Open Meeting Law Advisory Commission, the Massachusetts Gaming Commission, and the UMass Board of Trustees. Note also that charter school boards of trustees are considered state public bodies, not local. Local public bodies can include the Board of Selectmen, School Committee, and Planning Board. The governing board of a local housing or redevelopment authority is also considered a local public body. Regional or district public bodies are those with a jurisdiction that covers more than one municipality. Regional school committees, water commissions, and planning commissions are all examples of regional or district public bodies. County public bodies may exist in areas that still have a county government boards of county commissioners, county retirement boards, and a county charter review commission are some examples of county public bodies. Now here are some examples of entities that are not public bodies. At the state level, the legislature is statutorily exempt from the open meeting law. The judicial nominating commission is also not a public body because it's a body created to advise a constitutional officer, namely the governor. The Massachusetts Municipal Association is also not a public body because it's a private, not-for-profit entity. At the regional level, a regional high school boosters club is also a private organization, so it's not considered a public body. 
At the local level, neighborhood watch associations and parent-teacher organizations are generally private organizations that are not created by government and therefore are not considered public bodies. Local political groups, such as Republican and Democratic town committees, are also not subject to the open meeting law. Once you've determined that a group is a public body, the next step is figuring out whether the open meeting law applies to what the group is doing, specifically whether it's deliberating. Deliberation is defined as an oral or written communication through any medium, including electronic mail, between or among a quorum of a public body on any public business within its jurisdiction. This is also a very broad definition. It covers any communication, whether in person, over the phone, or through email, between or among a quorum of a public body. For the purposes of the open meeting law, a quorum is defined as a simple majority of the members of the public body, unless otherwise provided in a general or special law, executive order, or other authorizing provision. Fewer than a quorum of a body's members can discuss matters within that body's jurisdiction without that communication being a deliberation. So, if three members of a seven-member committee, for instance, decide to discuss committee business, that would not be a deliberation, provided that those three members are not a subcommittee. However, public body members should be careful to avoid serial communications between a quorum. For example, if there's a five-member board, and member A calls member B, and then member B calls member C and relays what he discussed with member A, this could constitute a deliberation, because the communication has now reached three members, which would be a quorum. This is a particular problem with conversations over email that are forwarded from one member to another, or on which a quorum of the members are copied. We therefore caution members of public bodies to avoid email communications, except for specific exempt activities. For instance, members of a public body may distribute via email or by hand a meeting agenda, procedural, or scheduling information, and generally that will not constitute deliberation. Reports or documents to be discussed at a meeting can also be distributed to a quorum of a public body without constituting deliberation. These exceptions only apply, though, if the person distributing the agenda, document, or scheduling information doesn't express any opinion on matters within the body's jurisdiction. For instance, a public body member can email the rest of the members of the public body a report generated by a consultant to be discussed at the next meeting. However, the distributor cannot comment in the email that he or she agrees with the report and thinks the body should approve it at the next meeting. Finally, there is no deliberation where a public body, such as a board of selectmen, discusses whether to recess and continue town meeting due to a weather-related or public safety emergency. Discussion must be limited to this narrow subject, however. The next important definition is that of a meeting. A meeting is a deliberation by a public body with respect to any matter within the body's jurisdiction. So, if a quorum of the members of a public body expect to deliberate, they must hold a meeting and provide notice to the public. Again, there are statutory exclusions to this definition. First, an on-site inspection by a quorum of a public body is not considered a meeting, provided the members do not deliberate. Thus, members of a school committee may tour a new school and take notes for discussion at a subsequent open meeting, but may not deliberate while on the tour. A quorum of a public body may also attend an event or training, provided they don't deliberate. So if all the members of the school committee attend a holiday party, for instance, but they don't discuss school committee business, they don't have to post notice for a meeting. A quorum of a public body may also attend the meeting of another public body, provided they don't deliberate. Members of a public body may participate in the meeting of another public body if they communicate only by open participation, such as by sitting in the audience and addressing the public body on the same terms as members of the public, and again, do not deliberate. If a quorum of a public body wants to deliberate during a meeting of another public body, then the two bodies should notice and hold a joint meeting. Meetings of quasi-judicial boards for the sole purpose of making a decision in an adjudicatory proceeding are also not considered meetings subject to the open meeting law. This exception only applies to certain state public bodies that conduct adjudicatory proceedings, and it's not available to local public bodies, such as zoning boards of appeal or boards of health. Finally, sessions of town meeting, the formal legislative session of many municipalities, are not meetings subject to the open meeting law. The Attorney General interprets this exemption to mean that all communications between town meeting members about town meeting are exempt from the requirements of the open meeting law, 
even if they occur outside a session of town meeting. Thus, the Division of Open Government will not investigate open meeting all complaints concerning such discussions.